Hey friends, I'm Jeffy G, back with another video. I want to talk a bit about Playbeat 4 again. I did an earlier video which is linked up above and in the description if you want to watch it. But these are more advanced tips and tricks that I think are pretty cool. Some of these things are not in the limited user manual that comes with Playbeat. But I think once you understand them, you can really extend the use of its strength, which is in MIDI generation and AI. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a variety of new ideas and you can extrapolate from there how to use them and you'll have a lot of fun doing it. Before we get too far into the advanced features of Playbeat 4, make sure you're on the latest version of the software. You can find out what version you're on by clicking on this icon in the top left. I'm on version 4.07. I was on version 4 and I found that there were a few bugs that didn't allow me to do what I want to demo over the rest of this video. If you haven't downloaded the latest version, you can get it off of the Audio Modern website by logging into my account, and you should see an update here. If you bought Playbeat 4 from Plugin Boutique, you can go there and get the update as well. In Playbeat 3, I had purchased or downloaded a bunch of expansions and they were down here listed as packs. And I needed those in Playbeat 4. In Playbeat 4, adding packs is pretty simple. You go to the preset browser, and there is a link down at the bottom for importing packs. The only trick is you need to know where are those downloads. You could have put them anywhere on your local hard drive, but if you do a search for PB pack, you'll find where you've downloaded them too. So here's one called Igniter, and it's in my samples folder, Playbeat packs, Igniter. Once you know where they are, they're easy to import. After they're imported, they actually get stored in your music folder, Audio Modern. Here they are in the imported samples. Normally, when you're using Playbeat 4, you would load it into the MIDI instrument slot on your DAW. In Logic, that goes right here. And it would work just like any other MIDI instrument. But there's a new capability in Playbeat 4 where you can load it as a MIDI effect, just like you would an arpeggiator or a chord trigger or anything that generates MIDI. You can see it there, Playbeat 4, and notice that Playbeat 3 is not there. So this is a new feature with Playbeat 4. So what I have is on track number three, I've loaded Handy Drums by Gorham Grooves. Normally, I would play these drums by picking MIDI or programming in them myself to use any of these sounds. And it's important to note that there are 10 drum sounds and eight percussion sounds. But using Playbeat 4 as a MIDI generator, it's only gonna create eight lanes. So basically eight MIDI notes. And I'm gonna to have to pick and choose which drums of handy drums do I want it to play. In order to figure that out, I needed to know which MIDI notes trigger these drum sounds. And to do that, I displayed the keyboard in handy drums and I just went through playing the various notes. And logic helped me here a little bit is that every time you click on a drum, say from a MIDI controller keyboard, it shows you up here what note is being played. And I could go through and identify all of the notes that would trigger the sounds for handy drums. And this is going to be different depending on which drum software you're using. To keep things straight in my mind, I created this little chart. My target drum in handy drums with all the MIDI notes that trigger those drums and how I was going to assign it to each play beat source. So track one was going to play a kick, track two a snare, track three hi-hat, and so on. Here's where this comes in handy. In Playbeat 4, if you go into the settings, you can control things like the MIDI output and which MIDI notes are being triggered. And you can see here, I've assigned each one of these notes to a given track. By default, these are all flagged as off, but by turning them on and picking a note, this is gonna override sort of the default pitch settings that are attached to every preset. And there's a button down here for locking the MIDI outputs, which I'll explain in some detail. Once I had that set up, I saved it as a user preset. So I've got track one assigned to C1, track two, D1. You might recall that's a snare, F sharp one, hi-hat. And I'm clicking on lock those MIDI notes. On the MIDI output, I also assigned each track to a separate MIDI channel. I think by default, they all come assigned to MIDI channel one. And we're gonna use this later in the next example. Point is, this will override the pitch settings that are attached to every preset. And that gives you the ability to use the random capability and the AI. So 
So what you're hearing now is Playbeat is generating the MIDI, but the sounds you're hearing are from Handy Drums by Gorham Grooves. I can hit random, change the pattern. Hit random again. So this is great. You can use any third-party drum sound source. I've chosen to use Handy Drums by Gorham Grooves, but you could use anything. And you're using Playbeat 4 to generate the MIDI. And really, the only limitations here is that you only have eight lanes, so you can only trigger eight drums. This next use of Playbeat 4 as a MIDI generator is perhaps the most complex. The goal here is to use Playbeat, which is inherently a single sample player, to trigger a multi-sampled, multi-layered kit. And for that, I'm using Logic's drum kit designer with the SoCal Plus. And SoCal Plus is a multi-output kit that adds about 20 tracks. So track one has Playbeat 4 inserted as a MIDI instrument. In order for that to work properly, you also have to install some instrument, even though you're not gonna be using that instrument. So for that instrument, I chose Quick Sampler. And it doesn't matter what instrument you have in there because it's gonna be muted. Just to help you understand that there is an instrument there, Playbeat 4 or Generate MIDI. You can see it's just trying to play a bass instrument, but the notes are very low. So I'm going to put that on mute. So looking at the Playbeat configuration on track one, if you go into settings, I've assigned each MIDI output track to a certain MIDI channel. Track one is assigned to channel one, track two to channel two, and so on all the way to track eight. That means any notes that are played on track one are going to be delivered via MIDI channel one. Any MIDI notes generated on track two are going to come across as MIDI channel 2. I've also selected specific notes for each track, and I've got that turned on and locked. Very important that you turn on the lock MIDI output. Now, to keep track of that, I ended up creating this little chart here. I needed to know details about the SoCal kit. The SoCal kit has a note range from F0 up to F sharp 2, and each one of those notes is assigned a particular kit piece. Cymbal, hi-hat loss, rim, little splash, snare, kick. From C1 onward, I've assigned those to a given track in Playbeat. C1, which sounds a kick drum, is assigned to track one. C sharp one, which is a rim shot, is assigned to track seven. So you see, with only eight slots in Playbeat, I'm only gonna be able to trigger eight different kit pieces. Then in the settings of Playbeat on track one, I've made those assignments. Track one is assigned to C1, track two, D1, track three, A sharp one, and so on. Eight tracks, all assigned to specific MIDI notes. I'll show you a scenario later where I've turned that off. And then within the SoCal kit, I've assigned each kit piece that I want to make a sound to the internal MIDI source. In this case, it, it's called Squishy Funk, and this will receive MIDI on channel seven. The kick in, again, it's assigned to track one as a MIDI source, internal MIDI source, and it's assigned to channel one. Kick out, same thing. Snare, also assigned to track one as an internal MIDI source. That's gonna be consistent all the way through here, but it's gonna receive on channel two. Snare bottom, also on MIDI channel two. Hi-hat on MIDI channel four. The high tom on MIDI channel six. I have muted out the mid tom and the low tom. I've got the tambourine assigned to MIDI channel five. I've muted out the shaker and the hand claps. And these other tracks are actually summing tracks. They don't have a kit piece associated with them. And then I've got snare, which is summing together two, kick summing together two. There's nonlinear reverb, some other reverbs, and some submixes. And since these ones at the bottom are summing other tracks, they're not assigned to the internal MIDI generation that would come from Playbeat. It's complex, but it works. Now going back to the settings, if I were to turn off the locked fixed note outputs and turn these off, what I'm gonna hear is anything that's assigned to these pitches on the pitch tab. And for the most part, looking at these pitches, it's gonna sound okay. 
The problem is when you hit the random button or choose a different patch, you're going to get new values for the pitch. Now I've got all kinds of values. And I'm not hearing very much. I just heard a little bit of tambourine. The reason is that these values are outside the range of the SoCal drum kit. The SoCal drum kit doesn't have a kit piece assigned to, say, C3. So one way I've worked around that is back in the Playbeat MIDI source, I'm using the transposer MIDI functions. I found if I lower all of these by one octave, it will push some of those notes into the right range. And that range will execute a MIDI note, which may or may not have a kit piece assigned to it in the SoCal drum kit. It's just sort of a quick fix, but it doesn't necessarily give you the results you're after. So if I hit random again, for example, I've got hi-hat here is assigned to A sharp two. It's gonna play A sharp one with the transpose. But it sounds like A sharp one is assigned to a tom, not a hi-hat. So there's some randomness to it if you don't pre-assigned fixed notes. If we go back into the settings and turn on the fixed notes and lock the MIDI output, hopefully we'll get our hi-hats back. Oh, we still have the transpose. Turn the transpose off. So now with the MIDI note outputs as fixed values. Anytime we randomize anything, say, on track one, it's going to be outputting just a given MIDI note. Ah, that symbol on track seven can, can get annoying. The good thing about this setup is that I'm triggering multi-sampled, multi-layered notes from a Logic drum kit in Drum Kit Designer, and I can randomly come up with new patterns. In theory, you can use the AI capability too. And say so I'm only after patterns that are Afrobeat or ambient. And once the AI is turned on, when I hit random, it's gonna affect what kind of patterns I get. In this next example, I've gone back to loading Playbeat 4 as just a normal, like you would load any other instrument, and it's on track one. And I've picked a preset here that sounds like this. And I saved that preset because I, I did end up modifying it. But what if you want to modify some of the sounds? So for example, I've got this sound on track two. It's kind of a snare. I'm just going to add a few more. And let's say I want to modify that snare sound. I click on this button right over here and it lets me listen to the preview of that sample. By the way, to hear that preview, you have to click and hold. And there's things I could do here, like I could change the intonation, increase it, higher pitch, reverse. I can fade in and fade out. And I can apply a certain degree of filter. Now, if I want to change that snare sound to a different snare sound, I click on this link, which is going to pull up the browser. You'll see here, samples is highlighted. Well, there's a lot of samples in this library. You can tell by how slowly the scroll is moving. If I type in snare, I've still got a long list of stuff to select from, and these are factory snares. I could listen to them. Let's say I wanted this one and preview it. Different snare, go back to listening to my pattern. So it's pretty easy to modify any of the samples in these eight lanes and then save that as your own kit. How many samples are in the factory samples? I'm not quite sure. On the Audio Modern website, it says there's 1500 kits, but it doesn't tell you how many samples are available in those kit definitions. If I wasn't happy with all the factory samples, by the way, I just wanna clarify that one of the strong attributes of Playbeat are the unique samples that come delivered. So I tend to use the factory samples and you can have favorites that you've saved. And if you modified a sample, you could save it as a user sample. So you could start with a factory sample, make modifications, 
and then save it. Another source of those samples are imported samples. Here's a list of snare sounds that come from these sources. These are expansion packs. So igniter, for example. So if I wanted to replace it with this one, pretty long snare sample. Maybe I want to increase the pitch. So imported samples are expansion packs that you've bought that came with samples. Another source are folders that you add, which could be samples you're storing in a sample library. In my case, I've got a lot of my samples stored on this separate SD card. And here there are some samples that I've imported. In fact, if I remove the search for snare, you can see that a lot of these are natural sounds. This one comes from crayons. It's actually the sound of crayons being dropped. It's easy to add a folder. As I mentioned, I've got a library of samples and loops. If I go into my drums group, I've got beach waves percussion. I'm going to add that folder. Here's all the samples. So there's a beach sound that I'm substituting for the snare. This method of loading samples in your sample library that you've downloaded or you found for free, where it's adding just the folder, is great because it's not replicating the storage of those samples. It's really just pointing to the location of those samples and making them available in Playbeat. So very easy to bring in your own samples and expand your library. If you found this video on Playbeat 4 useful, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, click the notification bell, and if you have any questions or comments, please add them. I get back to everybody who contacts me. Thanks for watching.